Welcome to my lecture online. So here's part two of our two-part video series on evidence that Mars had a wet past. In the previous video we covered eight of the major points, but there's many more places where we can find evidence that Mars at one point must have been a wet planet. So let's take a look at the others. Uh, number nine, we have what we call ring lines along the sides of dry lake beds. Now, if you've ever driven along some of the reservoirs in California, we have wet years, we have some very dry periods. During the dry periods, the water level of the reservoirs keeps going down year by year, and usually they leave big rings along the side of the sides of the reservoirs, and so as the water goes lower and lower, you can see the subsequent rings that are left year after year. Well, it turns out on Mars we see the same kind of thing. We see the sides of a, um, of a li dry lake bed, and we see these very distinct lines that look just like the ones you would find on, on Earth in re reservoirs or dry lakes where the water kind of laps up against the side. So again, very clear evidence that once upon a time there must have been water in those lakes. Uh, the, of course, the, the, the one thing that's the overwhelming piece of evidence is that in the very northern part where the elevation is much lower, about four to five kilometers, below the average elevation of Mars, we have the region which is called Vastitel Borealis Basin, which covers about one-third of the surface. A lot of the landers that landed on Mars have landed in that region because it was always of great interest, and yes, we have found significant evidence there that water did at one point exist in that region, that that region was probably below, uh, below water. In that region now, of course, it's all dried up, and of course we have some beautiful pictures here what Mars looks like on the surface nowadays. Uh, notice that it looks extremely dry, there's no vegetation whatsoever, no, not a sign of life that we have been able to find, and it looks just like the driest of the dry deserts on the Earth. But it turns out that if we take a look at some of the flatter regions in that, uh, in that northern region of Mars, we find things such as polygon shaped, it almost looks like tiles, they're two to three meters in diameter, about six to ten feet in diameter. They're polygon in shape and they have kind of like grooves or troughs going around it that are about 20 to 50 centimeters deep. So you have these rounded regions with like grooves around it. And those rounded regions, when we had landers there, they dug below the surface in those regions we found water ice just five to ten centimeters two to four inches below the surface we found water ice in there those shapes just like on the earth are typically made by water that freezes and that's why we have those hexagonal shapes so we even see that in basalt regions in some place in the earth we have these hexagonal columns which are frozen lava so whenever something freezes up it tends to crack up in those particular shapes and that's what seems to have happened in that region in the northern region of Mars and because we find water ice just below the surface we can assume that once upon a time there probably was a fair amount of water there then we have the Aeolis Paulus in Gale Crater. Now Gale Crater is over in this region of Mars right there. The rover Curiosity landed nearby. And uh, what it found was that in the bottom of the crater there were remains of an ancient, ancient freshwater lake. So if we go over here, if this is Gale Crater, typically craters that are big, they have those central upwelling of the, uh, the bounce back of the surface of the planet as it gets crushed by the incoming uh, meteorite, then it will kind of bounce back, form a lower region around the central rise. And in the northern part there of that particular crater, we found evidence, well, not we, but the Curiosity rover, found evidence that once upon a time there was ancient fresh water there. So when the Curiosity rover went in and also started digging into the soil, it found one to three percent of the soil by weight was water ice. So that's actually significant. Of course, you can't live off of that. It would be very difficult to get it out of the soil. But the fact that it's there just below the surface to be found by the Curiosity rover was quite amazing. And so again, evidence that water ice is all around the planet Mars. Another thing that we found in Gale Crater was an alluvial fan. Now, if you travel through the great western desert and you see the mountains in the di distance and then you see the 
canyons coming down from the mountains well typically during the summer especially they're bone dry but you can see that there's these alluvial fans those flat sloped regions that come from a point where water breaks through the canyon there's like a, a dry creek bed and then you see the alluvial fans spread out and over the thousands and millions of years from erosion it forms these large sloped regions they're called alluvial fans they kind of look like this if this was kind of like a, a sloped uh, a high slope from the side of the crater you can see this long region of deposited material that forms that that flat alluvial fan well we found one of those in Gale crater and it turns out that those things don't come there by themselves they're usually left there by erosion caused by water and then the deposit the still deposit from the running waters comes down so again another piece of evidence that we had running water once upon a time on Mars then we have what we call the Hata rock outcrop that was named that way. The rover went through a dry riverbed and it saw some outcropping of rocks that had specific lines that looked like deposits. So the, the kind of rock that we expect to have been deposited over time, it's, you see the various layers in the rock. And so therefore this outcropping made it an indication that that once upon a time was an ancient stream bed. Also in the same region we found rounded pebble, pebbles, which is another indication that water action and erosion of pebbles rolling over one another, they smooth out the edges. And that's how we end up with those smooth rounded pebbles. We find those all over the earth and we find those on Mars as well. Then we also find different kinds of minerals, specific mafic silicate minerals, which are olivine, pyroxene, and feldspar, and then they further turn into different minerals due to the secondary action of water. So secondary minerals such as iron hydroxide, and we also find what we call evaporite minerals, where water once existed, then as it evaporates, it forms these minerals, and we find gypsum, keyserite, and silica, and other minerals, all part of the action of water acting on the soils and the minerals that are already there. Then we find another very big indicator of massive amounts of water existing on the surface of Mars, which is the outflow channel at KC Valley. Now where's KC Valley? Well we have to come back up on the map here. So when you look over here you see the big, this right here is the Valmarineris, that's a 3,000 mile long Long Canyon, but to the north of that, there was another outflow channel that goes again to the same sea region that must have existed there once upon a time, so it's a little bit to the north of that. And this is a blown out map of that, and of course, the colors are kind of deceiving. It's all brown and rusty, a reddish color, but it's clearly in high definition pictures that there's two major rivers that flow into this region right here. And once upon a time, it must have been full of water and flowing water into the ocean that exists on Mars. Those are unmistakable riverbeds. They're completely bone dry now. They haven't had running water in them for probably several billion years, but they're still there, still very visible. And you'd say they look just like the riverbeds on the Earth, have the exact same features, the exact same structures. And yeah, it's unmistaken that those could only have been formed by liquid running water. So you can see we've come up at least 20 points of evidence. There's way more than that. There's no question that Mars had a wet past. The question more is like when, to what extent, how big was the ocean, that kind of thing. Those are probably some questions we haven't completely been able to answer yet. But there's no question that Mars was a wet planet with clouds and rain and an atmosphere and oceans and rivers and lakes, you name it probably was missing the trees and the green and the fish and all that. We do not think that Mars was in that state long enough for life to have evolved on the planet. At this point, we don't know. We haven't found any evidence yet, but we're still looking. You never know, we might come up on something. But that's the past of Mars. It was wet, it was rainy, miserably cold probably. Uh, probably not a good place to go on vacation, but there was water there. And that's the past of Mars.